I thank the member for Banks. The question is that the bill be now read a second time, so I call the member for Perth. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Very interested in that last contribution and uh, the talk about need uh, for us to have to be thoughtful, careful, and methodical in our planning of infrastructure, and uh, and not to have uh, have our projects um, and our prioritisation of projects being made a uh, a political plaything. Well, I think this uh, this legislation, of course. Um, takes us backward in that regard, and, uh, and, and our principal criticism of, uh, of these changes to Infrastructure Australia uh, is that um, the government, having been forced to uh, honour their commitment uh, made at the last election that all projects over $100 million will be assessed uh, by Infrastructure Australia. Uh, uh, again, Infrastructure Australia set up um, by the previous Labor government to ensure that we indeed had thoughtful, careful and methodical uh, planning of our infrastructure and uh, assessment of cost-benefit analysis. But uh, nevertheless, the federal government uh, had originally uh, tried to uh, avoid their election commitment that they would ensure that every project over $100 million uh, was indeed assessed uh, by Infrastructure Australia. Uh, they then um, fell foul of the Senate when they uh, try, tried to initially move a set of uh, amendments to the Infrastructure Australia uh, legislation uh, to remove the requirement for this assessment. Uh, that has subsequently been rejected, and now they've come back, um, uh, supposedly honouring this commitment, but in the, but in the most bizarre way. Uh, and that commitment now is that we will assess this infrastructure uh, once we have already approved it. So once we've already approved it and provided the federal funds uh, for the infrastructure that is carried um, under this um, under this uh, under this uh, scheme, then we will do the assessment. I mean, what is the point of that? The whole idea of having an infrastructure Australia assessment and determining a cost-benefit analysis and what other externalities of value there may be, uh, that you use that to prioritise the expenditure. But what we're doing here, it turns indeed, it turns the entire thing on its head. It is saying we're going to prioritise and make our decisions, and after we've made our decisions, then we're going to go off and do an Infrastructure Australia assessment. I mean, it just simply doesn't make sense. And, and I have to say, let's, let's look at uh, this um, in the context of this project uh, that supposedly we're going to see in Western Australia, and that is the Perth Freight Link. Now, the Perth Freight Link was announced in great fanfare, leaked to the, I think, leaked to uh, one of the uh, West Australian papers um, in advance of the budget, uh, and then uh, in due course announced at the budget. Now, this Perth Freight Link um, comprises of three components: the Row Highway extension and eight kilometres of road, the configuration, a reconfiguration of Stock Road, and a reconfiguration of High Street. Now, the Row Highway extension is about two thirds of the project uh, in terms of its, um, if it, of its overall cost, uh, about $740 million. Now, the remainder of that project is $460 million. I mean, a pretty sizable proportion, uh, a pretty sizable uh, item of expenditure. Now, we heard the, uh, the Assistant Minister. Minister Briggs say in the uh, after the announcement at a press conference that the cost benefit analysis of the project is out of the ballpark. It's over five. So the cost benefit analysis were, uh, showed that it had a uh, a benefit to cost ratio of uh, of more than five to one. But what we did then subsequently found out is, in fact, uh, that was only a draft cost-benefit analysis and not available for anyone to, to see at this point, uh, and certainly not anything that could be used to found the prioritisation of the project. But more significantly, it transpires that this indeed related only to one part of the project, the Row Highway Extension. So when in the State Parliament, after this announcement was made that we were going to get this Perth Freight Link, 
uh, questions are asked of the Commissioner for Main Roads, uh, and he was asked about the estimation of that of the $460 million that had been allocated to the non-row highway parts of the project, uh, and uh, whether or not this represented um, a, reasonable cost, uh, a reasonable cost estimate, let alone the cost benefit. Was it a reasonable cost estimate? And, and the Commissioner says, well, look, it is too early to talk. Uh, about both Stock Road and High Street because we're still looking at different design options. And then the parliamentary secretary <coughs> representing the, uh, the state minister uh, said this. He said, the Commonwealth has a propensity to make these announcements, as you know, but the reality is, ma uh, is that Main Roads Department and this government will be implementing and designing Row 8 extension. And this stage, we actually we do not actually have got sorry we have not actually got design plans that are worthy of public scrutiny. So here you have the parliamentary secretary of a Liberal government in Western Australia saying that we do not actually have design plans that are worthy of public scrutiny, and yet we have got here a government telling us that they are going about infrastructure planning in a thoughtful, careful and methodical way, and this is not about play, a political plaything. Now, it is quite clear, it is quite clear, Mr. Uh, Mr. Deputy, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that this was a concept that had been this concept of the freight link, which was one that was uh, was hastily patched together, hastily patched together to try to cover this hole that was in the budget because they were taking out the $500 million that was in the previous budget uh, for important and much in demand rail extension projects in Perth, projects which again had been uh, committed to by the federal uh, Liberal government of the, of the day and sorry by the state Liberal government of the day um, and saying that they would um, be reliant on federal government support. So they were taking that money out, so they had to come up with another project. so they hastily cobbled together, this notion of the Perth Freight Link, a project which, as I say, quoting government members in Western Australia, that this is a project that is not at a stage where one can make a reasonable cost estimate of it because we have not actually got design plans that are worthy of public scrutiny. And yet we have made a decision, apparently, in our budget that this project is going to get funding. So don't come in here and talk to us about your careful, thoughtful and methodical planning. We're back to the good old days of the rompies of the roads of national party importance. And uh, uh, except this time, you know, expanded, <laughs> expanded, expanded out, so we get a, we get a few roads. Uh, now it's quite uh, clear that um, now it, it is really interesting. Uh, that we have got uh, that when I put in an FOI request uh, to the, minister, the federal minister's office for what details that were there that he has had of this project in his office. Now the really amazing thing. Now this is this is a project which apparently has been the subject of careful, methodical, and th thoughtful planning. Well, the minister actually apparently only has one set of emails in his office relating to this entire project, which is a pretty extraordinary uh, set of circumstances. But it's also really quite amusing when we actually see what the one email chain is uh, that, is, uh, that, uh, that apparently um, is the only thing that is in the minister's office about this, uh, about this project. And it's a, you know, it's a, it's a series of emails of concern um, from uh, when it started off by a, an email from uh, from the infrastructure department, the federal infrastructure department, uh, to the main roads department, and they their subject is the Perth freight link, and uh, they say that oh look we understand Minister Briggs is planning a visit. The site of the Perth freight link on um, freight link on Monday. Could you urgently set us set us some locations? Um, and uh, they said, if it can be in the electorates of Swan or Tagney, that would be ideal, but not necessary. 
And so obviously not a, not, a, not a political decision at all, not a political prioritisation, clearly. Just, it just so happens that we'd like it to be either in Swan or Tacney. Anyhow, they sort of, you know, the department, uh, the state agencies like Main Roads, um, you know, are obviously concerned. You know, the first thing comes back, hi, Alan Peter, uh, can you advise if you know any more? And then the next person says, she's sending it on to someone else, do you know anything about this, guys? And the next guy says, are you able to help on this? Main Roads has been approached about this. Um, uh, we are interested, of course, but our office hasn't received any contact as yet, so we are a bit in the dark. Well, look, and interestingly, when this matter um, comes, uh, how, how it's described um, by the main roads, uh, it, it's not the Perth freight link, but they call it trust coming here for a row eight thing question mark. So, um, we quite clearly have a situation where, uh, in my view, that we have had the old, uh, very, very controversial Row Highway uh, Stage 8 project, which has been around for, uh, which has been around for some 15 years, uh, that has been dressed up, covered, surrounded uh, with a few other bits and pieces, very expensive bits and pieces, $460 million of uh, of extra pieces and called the Perth Freight Link. And it is quite clear that has, there has been no detailed planning, no thoughtful, careful and methodical planning of this at all. And indeed what we are going to see with this project um, is very much uh, the the government's vision is that the prioritisations will be made on a purely political basis and there will be some uh, post facto, post decision making process whereby these projects are looked at by Infrastructure Australia. But it is to undermine the very, uh, the very essence of this project. Now, we know that the government is continuing to have problems on this, um, of even coming to to terms with this, the nature of this project. We have that very fabulous, very switched on. Lovely man, the Assistant Minister, Ms. Minister Briggs, uh, telling uh, last week, telling a tunnelling conference. He said this: "In Perth, Western Australia, we've committed to the Perth Freight Link, which is, for those of you not from West Australia, Western Australia, the railway extension that will have a dedicated freight route all the way past the airport to Fremantle Port." Now that is absolutely brilliant. It is a railway project. So this again goes to uh, to show you um, the uh, the amount of thoughtful, careful planning that has gone into this cobbled together process. But of course, we do need more infrastructure funds in uh, in Western Australia. And I just want to correct for the record, uh, Jamie, uh, the Minister Briggs has shown that he can't read his own. Uh, budget papers. He contested my claim about WA's unfair deals. Let me spell out some of the numbers here. The WA's population, the Grants Commission estimates for WA's population for 2014-15, which is the relevant figure that we should be using, is 11.1 per cent, not the 10.8 claimed by the Assistant Minister. Secondly, WA has been allocated 4.7 million of the total allocated budget of 45.3 per cent. That is 10.37 per cent, not 11.7. The, the Assistant Minister really needs to get across the details of WA funding and show us where it is, where he has got this 11.7 uh, uh, percent figure for the WA share of infrastructure, but even if it was 11.7, that simply is good and not good enough. We are over 16 per cent of the. Uh, we are over 16 per cent of the. Uh, of the. Uh, we produce over 16 per cent of the GDP in Western Australia. We are being absolutely un and um, unfairly dealt with through the uh, Howard Court GST agreement. And our only way of rectifying this in the short term is getting a decent and fair share of the, uh, of the infrastructure budget, which I'll again say, under the budget papers, it's showing us as getting 10, Western Australia getting 10.37 per cent. And that is uh, less than half of that 
uh, that is being uh, granted, or almost uh, less than half of that, that is going to Queensland. Um, and this simply is not, uh, it's not an, acceptable, uh, an acceptable treatment of Western Australia. Thank the member for